Hello everyone. So we are talking about the motor examination and we have covered tone and power and bulk, right? So next is reflexes. Now reflexes, as the name shows, reflex. Reflex is involuntary. It's on voluntary first of all. It's not voluntary action. Involuntary. It will be automatic, right? So involuntary action, involuntary any stimulus, any stimulus. If the reflex arc is intact means there is no damage within the nerve pathway involved okay reflex arc when we talk about it's nothing but a receptor the signal taken by afferent a control center and efferent having effectors okay now that that this is reflex arc now examination of reflexes so reflexes are of two types superficial reflexes and deep tendon reflexes superficial reflexes are when a stimulus is applied to skin or mucous membrane. Those are superficial reflexes in response to the underlying muscle contract. Okay. Deep tendon reflexes are monosynaptic reflexes. Okay. There is one synapse at level of spinal cords. So superficial reflexes are polysynaptic reflexes. So some higher centers are involved. And there are no only one synapse. In fact, more than one synapse involved. Okay. So let us start. So superficial reflexes first. Superficial reflexes of two types based on spinal nerve and based on cranial nerve. Based on spinal nerve are plantar reflex, abdominal reflex. Based on cranial nerve are conjunctival reflex, visual reflex and accommodation reflex. So starting one by one all the reflexes starting with plantar reflex. So plantar reflex first of all to know any reflex first of all what should be the position of subject right. How you will do, how you will perform the procedure, okay. Then what will be the response and what is the root level, okay. This, these all you should know. So plantar reflex. So subject should be in supine, okay. So this way the leg should be like this and you can hold it also so that it will not be mobile. And this is the plantar surface where you will run a blunt object and it should be fast for example, a key. So from heel to little toe and then medially. So this way you have to run a blunt object. Okay. The response is flexion. Plantar flexion. So all the toes, they will be bending toward this same surface. Plantar surface. Okay. This is plantar flexion. The response. The level is L5 S1. Okay. The extension, if there is extension of toe, and dorsiflexion on the opposite side toward hand. So that dorsiflexion is present in upper motor neuron lesion. So this is plantar reflex. Next is abdominal reflex. The position, the subject should be supine, relaxed with exposed abdomen. Okay. You have to make stroke parallel to, with the key obviously the blunt object, parallel to one is costal margin and inguinal margin. Okay. So parallel to these, you have to make a stroke movement with blunt object. You can see the underlying muscle contraction when we talk about response. The level is T7 to T12. These uh, responses are lost in upper motor neuron lesion. Okay. Coming to spinal, based on spinal now. First is conjunctival reflex. So touch the conjunctiva with cotton wool swab. Okay. And the response is contraction of orbicularis oris resulting in rapid eye closure. Here the efferent which carries the signal is 5th now and efferent is 7th cranial now. Okay. Trigeminal now is efferent and facial now is efferent. Efferent is trigeminal. So this is conjunctival. Next is pupillary light reflex. So this can be direct reflex, indirect reflex. So we have to examine each eye separately first of all. So, just shine a bright light into one eye with torch. As you can see here, the response is eye contraction and pupil constriction. With exposure of large illumination of light, there is pupil constriction. As you can see in the image, right? This is light reflex, which is direct reflex. Indirect light reflex is when you cover the eye to be tested, okay? And show bright eye to one eye and contraction in both the eye. So if you are lighting this and you are covering here with a uh, like copy, paper, anything and you are 
observing the same result in other eye also that is called indirect reflex right then is accommodation reflex so accommodation is the process by which images of near object are focused on retina increasing lens curvature so hold one finger close to subject's nose okay ask him to look away at distant object then suddenly on your tip finger tip so first the subject will be looking far away and then suddenly on your finger tip that is accommodation right response will be contraction of ciliary muscle and increase curvature of lens as you can see in the image so contraction of ciliary muscle so as you can see here the image which was far so he was first looking far okay the image is like this and suddenly when look close the image is like this because the curvature had changed the lens curvature okay so the re response is pupil constriction and contraction of ciliary muscle accommodation reflex coming to dtr deep tendon reflex which are monosynaptic reflex and will be covering knee jerk bicep jerk tricep jerk supinator and ankle jerk okay let's start knee jerk reflex so position for knee jerk is very important either it can be done supine or sitting okay the examiner hand passed under knee to be tested and placed over opposite knee so this way we can place it on opposite knee also and we can place hand below and it should be hanging then okay in the same way sitting me the leg should be hanging freely over other knee either over other knee or the leg should be even hanging freely that can be tested in same position response is when you will hit the tendon here where the quadricep tendon is originating here just below the patella okay you have to hit here now the quadricep contraction occur because of this the hit the knee is basically extension occur so the response is extension of knee as you can see in the image extension occur okay so level is l2 l3 and l4 okay coming to bicep jerk position is flex the elbow to right angle with forearm in semi prone position as you can see here the elbow is flexed 90 degree now place thumb or index finger here on bicep tendon okay now strike it with hammer as you strike it the bicep contraction occur which lead to flexion okay that is the response level is c5 c6 tricep flex the elbow and allow to rest across subject chest and tap tricep tendon as you can see this elbow is flexed and here is the tricep tendon which we have to hit with hammer okay and broad end of hammer the response is contraction of tricep which will lead to extension this is written wrong sorry so contraction of tricep lead to extension of elbow if this is contracting it will be extension okay level is c6 c7 next is brachioradialis reflex or supinator reflex as you can see in the image semi prone position this so elbow flexed flex uh, elbow little bit and then arm in semi prone position tap tap this brachioradialis tendon okay and response is contraction of brachioradialis so supination occur okay then level is c5 c6 ankle jerk reflex position is lower limb slightly flexed you have to dorsi flex it little bit okay and lying down position in supine position it can be done so slightly to stretch it it can be done in sitting position the other image is showing sitting position you have to flex the dorsi flexion uh, is done and posteriorly there is tendon and this is gastrocnemius muscle right having tendon here so with hammer you have to hit it here and the contraction of quadricep the, the gastrocnemius muscle occur okay the level is s1 s2 so if you see neurological examination the motor examination upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron lesion so if lower motor neuron lesion so the muscle will be flaccid all the reflexes are lost whether it's monosynaptic there will be hypotonia tone will be lost right and th then muscle atrophy occur okay if you talk about upper motor neuron lesion there will be high spasticity and in some cases rigidity okay there are deep tendon reflexes all the reflexes they will be hyperactive okay hyper reflex condition there will not be atrophy you will found so this is all about upper motor and lower motor neuron lesion
coming to coordination so coordination now to assess some higher functions like cerebellum basal ganglia and brain stem coordination so we have to examine to detect complex movements are done smoothly or not okay we'll be doing uh, in this rebound phenomena finger nose test heel shin test and rapid alternating movement how much coordination in movements present okay rebound phenomena ask the subject to flex at elbow and resist you as you try to extend it so he'll be asked to flex and will will stretch it will try to extend it okay now place other hand on patient shoulder and turn the patient head toward other direction now to shield the face and eyes let the arm go suddenly now just leave it suddenly now the arm will sway the arm should be returning to the other level the same level right but they are not able to return to same level if they are affected the arm basically oscillate in various direction various like curvy movement okay abnormal rebound that is called abnormal movement rapid alternating is nothing but rapid supination and pronation of hand alternate you have to do and you have to touch uh, the thumb with alternating finger so that is rapid alternative movement now demonstrate to patient the finger tapping can be done here hand tapping alternate okay if he'll able to do that it's normal and if there is some disorders of cerebellum then he'll not be able to do this fastly heel to shin test as you can see here heel is touching the tibia here uh, it's done in supine position and ask the subject to lift one leg up and place heel on shin of other leg then smoothly wrap it along the shin downward toward the toe the test is abnormal if the movement is irregular okay finger nose test as you can see the subject has to touch the finger of examine examiner and then touch nose okay then the examiner will be moving the finger on three dimensional plane and he have to repeat it the same so this way we can